What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the RG Allies Ultimate Power Saver and Performance Guide number seven. And today we're going to go over a few important games, but more importantly, games that required more attention from me than they usually do. And that's in order to get the most power out of these titles while still looking comparable and collected. I want these titles to play at the highest resolution as possible while saving the most power as possible. And of course, before starting this list, make sure to enable Radeon, Anti-Lag, and Boost. And of course, set the refresh rate to 120 Hertz and make sure to turn VSync off in every single graphic settings for every title on this list to enable VRR. And to get the most power for these games, because all of these games will be single player, make sure to disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for an extra around 20 to 25 minutes of gameplay. And that is a considerable amount, especially if you're in the car waiting for your fast food order to be done, or you're just waiting to pick somebody up and it's going to take an extra 30 minutes than you thought. Turning off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth will give you that extra time that you possibly need. But if you need Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, or if you're playing a multiplayer game, I do advise obviously turning on Wi-Fi to do so. And also I set the GPU VRAM to six gigabytes for smoother performance and all the VRAM you need for the type of graphical settings we're going to have for each game on the list. And the first game on the list since the new Amazon show came out is Fallout 3. Now I managed to get three hours and 45 minutes with this title. I set the TDP to eight watts, set the resolution to 1080 and managed to get 70 to a whopping 120 FPS max at ultra settings. And the smoothness of 70 and 120 FPS wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for the VRR, which is featured in the RG Ally. And the way I was able to get smooth and high FPS with Fallout 3, specifically on Windows devices like the RG Ally, is to go into Documents, My Games, Fallout 3, and in the Fallout 3 dot ini file change the ifps section from zero to 60. to find that section easiest just type in Control f and then search ifps and yes i was able to get three hours and 45 minutes with the fps being between 70 and 120 fps playing fallout 3 at 1080p at 120 fps at only eight watts is just incredible and i highly recommend playing this specific way especially with the settings I showed you. And remember to go into documents in order to fix the frames issue. And now the next game is Fallout 4. I managed to get two hours and 40 minutes with this title and set the TDP to 12 watts and the resolution at 1080p, of course. And I managed to get an average of 45 FPS. Depending on location, sometimes the FPS drops to 30 and that's at high settings. Sadly, Fallout 4 is one of those titles that requires a little more power. So you won't be able to go below 12 TDP if you want above 30 FPS at 1080p. But I pretty much almost got three hours with Fallout 4, so that's not too bad. And going to the next title on the list, it is Devil May Cry 4. And I got three hours and 25 minutes with this game. And I completed the entire game on the RG Ally recently. And I set the TDP to 9 watts. Of course, the resolution is at 1080p with the FPS fluctuating between 45 to even 100 FPS. And the graphic settings were set to high. Depending on location, the FPS will drop from 100 to 45. And these numbers are extremes from the times that you're indoors in these type of games or outdoors. And the next titles on the list is pretty much my favorite horror trilogy. And it kind of trumps Resident Evil. And that is Dead Space 1 Original. And I managed to get 3 hours and 45 minutes with this title at only 8 TDP. The resolution was set to 1080p and the FPS was at an average 45 with the graphic settings set to very high. And for some reason, this game does run a lot better if you limit the FPS through command center to 120. And I think 45 FPS is great for a title such as Dead Space 1 Original. It doesn't require a lot of accuracy. All you have to do is pretty much shoot limbs, which for the kind of monsters you fight is extremely easy to find. And Dead Space 2 was the same, 3 hours and 45 minutes with 8 TDP at 1080p with an average of 45 to 60 FPS at very high settings with the 120 FPS limiter on in Command Center. And the last of the trilogy, Dead Space 3, was again 3 hours and 45 minutes at 8 TDP 
at 1080p between 45 to 60 FPS with very high graphical settings. And I find these particular horror titles to be just exceptional and unforgettable. If you haven't checked out the Dead Space trilogy, I highly recommend it. And now for the game that required a tiny bit more attention on my part, and that is the Dead Space remake. It's kind of sad hearing the news about Dead Space 2 Remake potentially being cancelled, if not confirmed to be cancelled. I was really looking forward to that, but I kind of wanted Dead Space 4 more than the Dead Space 2 Remake. And with Dead Space Remake, I managed to get two hours. I set the TDP to 14 watts, the resolution to 900p, and the FPS fluctuated between 30 to 35, with the graphic settings set to high. And I specifically set FSR 2.0 to balanced with RAS sharpening enabled for extra clarity and of course Radeon boost and Radeon anti-lag to smooth out and have more consistent VRR with a game like Dead Space Remake. Now the alternative would be to set the TDP to 13 watts and set the resolution to 720p at high settings with FSR 2.0 set to quality with RIS sharpening enabled of course and this gives you around 2 hours and 25 minutes and the FPS actually jumps to 40 so not not only are you gaining almost 30 minutes, but you're gaining an extra 10 FPS on average. And the last resort, if you want to save the most battery as possible with ROG Ally and Dead Space Remake, you can set the TDP to 11 watts, but for some reason the TDP will sometimes hang around 9 to 10 watts. Set the resolution to 720p with medium settings, and you can actually go into the AMD software app and activate Radeon Super Resolution, or you can just go to Command Center and activate RSR, which is Radeon Super Resolution. But I recommend trying the AMD software first. And this helps a lot with Dead Space Remake's FPS. And set FSR 2.0 to balanced and have dynamic resolution enabled and set to 50%, as well as variable rate shading enabled and I managed to get three hours with a brightness set to 50% with these settings and of course the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned off. Now that's yet another 30 minutes added to Dead Space Remake with it not looking too bad but you do have to enable the dynamic resolution which isn't the worst at times but it still looks feasible and provides enough of an experience to feel like Dead Space Remake and to feel like enough of a jump from the original Dead Space 1. But my personal preference is to play Dead Space Remake at 18 watts TDP with, of course, 1080p high settings, and the FPS usually hangs around 30 to 35. And that gives me around an hour and 20 minutes of gameplay, but it's a horror game. It isn't an RPG, so an hour and 20 minutes is more than enough. But of course, I have pretty hefty power banks like the move speed, which I showed in another video. And at 18 watts, I get around eight hours of gameplay, so it doesn't really affect me much. I can actually finish the Dead Space remake with one battery. But yeah, I find all of these games tested to be pretty impressive on the RNG Ally, considering I played most of them at 1080p. But if there's anything I missed and I'm sure there is because there's so many variations and different kind of custom settings that you can have for the RG Ally and these titles provided. But yeah, there's going to be a lot more to come in terms of power saver guides and I try my best to find the best settings. I search tons of different Reddit conversations to find other people's custom settings for these titles. But yeah, let me know in the comments below if I missed anything and thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a good one. Later.